This is, this is a funny one. Let me... <laughs> yeah, okay, so look at this. Four Dovin's Acuities. Who wants to make fun of this card, huh? Enters the battlefield. Gain two life and draw a card. Whenever you cast an instant spell, send it back. Hell yeah. Um, what instance do we have to activate it? Four Revitalizes. Four Radical Ideas. Four Moments of Craving, right? So we're gaining life and we're drawing cards with Dovin's. Gaining life, drawing cards. Feels good. We have some Mortifies to remove. We have some Unmoored Egos to really hate. Radical Ideas instead of Opt. Yeah, I can cast this puppy two times, Denunciator. Cry of the Carnarium as just some general sweepering. Kai's Wrath as some general sweepering. We're even running the Immortal Sun, right? So it's literally all removal and then three Masterminds acquisitions where we can get one of a Dawn of Hope. There's other useful things like Clear the Mind, which if I'm running low on cards, I can just reshuffle everything back into my library. Uh, we also have like a Lyra Dawnbringer. If I unmoor to Ego all the Conclave Tribunals in an enemy deck, I can play a Ly Lyra Dawnbringer. Mirari Conjecture to help me bring back some more of these instants that can proc Dovin's Acuity and an additional Mastermind's Acquisition. We also have Ethereal Absolution, very good against these mono white decks that are trying to get long-term sustainability from Allegiance Landing. I just give those puppies minus one, minus one. We even have an In Bolus's Clutches. This one I love. Gain twice X life. Put this on the bottom of its owner's library. This deck is fun as hell. We'll play a few games with it. If we're losing, I will absolutely switch back to this Gruel Beatdown deck because I want to win. Make the BBD be a one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oof. We don't have any blue sources, do we? I'm keeping it, man. I don't give a damn. We have we have removal and removal. We're going first, so I feel like we can at the very least comfortably recover. Alright, a breeding pool. So breeding pool would typically indicate to me Sultai. Could be a wet Golgari. Uh, it, looks, it appears to be Bant though. So Mortify is going to be extremely valuable as a way to blow up Gilderness, Gil, Wilderness Reclamations. And because Growth Spirals commonly run in these decks, I am actually going to shock in. I'm going to shock this in because if right now, if at the end of our turn our opponent played a Growth Spiral, our opponent would be able to play Wilderness Reclamation, which we would want to blow up with this gorgeous artwork. Oh my god, I love this so much. If I get a blue source, I'm just going to immediately name Nexus of Fate, you know that. Oopsie daisies! Why do I talk so damn much? Bing, bong. Bing, bong. God, I, that's a huge error, man. I really screwed the pooch on that. Don't punish me for my mistakes. Whew, I was close. Hello. I'm so thirsty, huh? Mm, 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 mm. -mm. I'm not going to unmoor to Ego right now, because this is enough for Filled Mystic to be up. So I'm just going to Dovin's Acuity, dude. If this gets Frilled Mystic, then I'm a happy camper. Oh, Not my Dovin's Acuity. Alright, let's see what Carry does. Gotta be a little careful with our unmoored Egos.
Now, if this gets countered, then we can unmoor Ego. You know what I mean? DK Line says, I know what splash means when you say something like a Golgari deck that splashes blue, but when you're doing something like splashing a color, how do you know how many lands to add and what spells you are splashing that color for? I actually don't think our opponent has a counter to this, so I'm just going to name Nexus of Fate. Um, so, splashing is more of a term that is used very qualitatively, right? It's not like a very specific, precise definition. So, you you would just, in terms of English language, you'd use it very casually, like, oh, yeah, no, I'm just splashing blue in this deck, something like that. Uh, the second part of your question is, how do you know how many lands to add in? I can't remember the name of the article, DK Line, but there's a very nice article. All right, you got him, man. There's a very nice article um, on Channel Fireball about... Oh, damn, I can't remember the name of it. If someone can find it, it, it just analyzes how many of what land source you need in which situation. Um, so there's, there's guides for this sort of thing. One, two, three, four. We're going to go ahead and Masterminds Acquisition. We're going to pick a card that I own from outside the game. We get the Unmoored Ego. We're just going to go ahead and name Nexus of Fate here. If our opponent has yet another counter, that I mean, that's going to really surprise me. And we're probably dead. Wow! Main decking Syncopates and Frilled Mystics. That's kind of remarkable. Hurry! We're probably dead, but, you know... If we have a, if we're up against a Nexus of Fate deck that's running that many counters and they hit all of them, then you know, not much we can do about that. That's just sort of that. Highly likely that we're going to be able to pick off the fairy here, but uh, we're we're uh, I would estimate that we're just dead as shit right now. So. It's a very, very weird deck to be running in it. So, I mean, I, I think I just have to do this, like, right now. Like, basically, no matter what. Great. Alright, cool. If you run too many counters in a Bant Nexus deck, a few things happen. One is you don't have enough room for other cards that are helpful for you in other ways. Um, you know, like, for instance, if you have enough mana to cast one counter and you're against a red deck and they just cast two spells in one turn, so you, you counter one, but you can't counter the second one, and then you have essentially no tools to remove it. Like, this is the danger of having decks that are too thick with the uh, uh, counter spells. We're just going to concede here in a quick second. Yeah. You occasionally just get free wins like this, for sure. But, uh, th that's kind of why I was going like, whoa, Syncopates, like two Syncopates and Frilled Mystics main deck. Depending on what else is there, it could just be if there's like six counters in here, maybe eight counters, something like that. But, um, this is a surprisingly large amount of counters for that sort of deck. Dun, dun. Yeah, DK Line says, I was not ready to see some mass symbols that I haven't seen since friggin' Calc. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the problem with having a rich, deep, interesting game like Magic, is that if you actually want to do the probabilistic analysis to get things to be accurate and correct and valuable, then, yeah, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. Or at the very least, understand the math to be able to go, oh, I see what they're going for, and then just move on with your life. It's amazing chest. Uh, I think I don't have to shock in this Hallowed Fountain. Drowned Catacombs and Isolated Chapel is really nice to have here. Oh my gosh, is Amazing Chess the same player as we are? Esper versus Esper, but it's really rare for Esper decks to run a radical idea. 
Oh my god, it's literally the same deck as us. <laughs> oh my gosh, what do we kill? I know exactly what we're doing. We're going to unmoored Ego, and we're going to destroy our opponent's mastermind acquisitions. And then we're just going to win. Unless our opponent unmoored Ego us, unmoored Egos us first. You got it, man. We're literally the same deck. This is so funny, man. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pay the two life right now. I'm gonna unmoored so we play around Spell Pierce, which seems unlikely. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, I'm just conceding. I accidentally didn't click on the. Oh, I just hit the wrong button. Fuck, whatever. You have to click on the library and click on the thing and then hit okay. Alright. Interface owned. Pain. Pain. Well, there's a difference between doing what you want to do and hitting the right buttons to do what you want to do. Fuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Ugh. That's one of those streamer errors. All right, so this is a Simic Nexus deck, like, one million billion percent. I'm just gonna go ahead and shock this in. S2 Jr. says, what do you think is more important, writing or public speaking? I would say public speaking by a considerable margin, and it's not even remotely close. I would say it's, like, not even remotely close. That said, you have to learn how to write properly. You must, like... People who are shitty writers just, like, have a big target on their foreheads professionally. But I mean, like, being able to speak in a very compelling fashion is, like, just so beyond essential. A lot of Mortifies is nice. How does this deck win? Sideboard, 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 sideboard. If you have any profession in which you interact with more than one person, you, you gotta do public speaking, man. Because the fact is, a lot of people sort of view their work too much as like the small silo that they're in. You know, like very commonly the programmer that just programs and then goes home. And sort of perceives that if I just do a good job programming at work, then I will be okay. When in reality, like, I'm not going to need this Cry of the Karnarium anytime soon, so we're going to go ahead and discard this one. So said programmer just, like, sits and works all day. So if there's six land and they play that, then they'll have one, two, and six, and they can begin to go infinite... Uh, I think I do have to wait on this until I can have the Mortify up to destroy Wilderness Reclamation. Yeah, I just think it's super important. Like, if you're, if you're a programmer and what you're supposed to do is just program six, seven hours a day, like, you still need to be communicating with tons of people. And, I mean, there's, there's a real tragedy of, like, the engineer who literally... Ah, shit. Doesn't matter. I'll, I'll just unmoored... I'll just mastermind unmoored ego the following turn. Or our opponent will. Because if I have the mortifies up, I can destroy the wilderness reclamation, which is what will prevent Tom from doing, like, infinity billion mana moves all at once. Um, yeah, like, if you are a good spoken communicator and a good written communicator in those sorts of situations... Like, you can actually let people understand what it is that you're doing. There's a lot of people that just sit there and they work hard and then they go home and they, like, work hard and they go home. And then someone's just like, oh, my God, I'm not getting promoted. I'm not getting credit for my work. And it's like, yeah, dude, you kind of have to actively explain to other people what your work is.
All right, let's let's not screw up the interface this time. Boy. So this game is not over. Oh, come on. Ah. Oh. Okay, so here's why I'm annoyed. We did we did get rid of four Nexus of Fates, but upon the last click, it just closed the interface. A huge advantage of that spell is that it actually gives us the chance to see precisely what is in our opponent's deck. So that's I'm I'm a little annoyed at that. It's fine, I'll get over it. It's just ladder rating, yeah. But I will say, generally speaking, I think that spoken communication is just profoundly more important than written communication in a lot of professional settings. But that said, you really kind of have to also be a really good written communicator for the same reason. Um, the thing about spoken communication, why I believe in it so strongly, is I've, uh, I've had this experience a lot, which is that I, I'm a very good speaker. I can speak compellingly and confidently, and people give me way more credit than I deserve often. <laughs> but I, I think that more so from like a... From a communication perspective, if you are able to address and answer someone's concerns immediately, like if they ask something and you can articulate it well right then and there, that's an instant feedback loop for the other person. And instant feedback loops are much stronger reactions in the human brain than deferred ones. Like, if you come to me, again, using this programmer example, if you come to me and say, hey, Sean, I have this programming question, and I can answer it immediately, or I can articulate something that will clarify it in your brain immediately, you'll give me way more credit um, than if I just quietly work away and then have a pretty good document I'll, I'll, at, at the end that conveys what work I did. Just because the way human brains work, right? I'll go, oh, this is a really good document, and upon reading it, I'll get a strong sense of it, but it's those instant kicks of conversational stuffs that historically I found that people respond to very, very well. Alright, so our opponent has some number of Hydroid Crazies. So we simply need to destroy the Crazy Boys, and then we're in good shape, yeah. So Kai's Wrath Mortify seems like a very reasonable thing to do here. Kai's Wrath seems important. But, you know, here's here's how I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to be a real jerk. We're going to go ahead and we're going to Mastermind's Acquisition. We're going to get a card from inside our library. We're going to find the Unmoored Ego that we're running in our main deck. And we're just going to play this and we're going to name Hydroid Crasis. Because that is, as far as I can tell, their only creature. There's nothing here. Let's go to the library. There's another one there. Are there any other creatures in this deck? There's a Frilled Mystic. Okay. So now there's just no creatures to worry about, right? Cool. But I think more than anything, I'll note, like, you... I don't care what profession you are, I am 100% convinced you need to learn to speak really cleanly and clearly and communicate really well, even if you don't like to do it. You must learn to be able to write very clearly uh, and really nice, clear, clean, elegant, persuasive writing. Not creative writing, just persuasive, communicative, idea-based writing. Alright, we did it. You must. How's it been performing for day nine? Uh, we lost once. We auto-conceded because we screwed up the interface like a moron. Uh, and then... Uh, I want to do this and then revitalize you. And then we beat a Nexus of Fate deck. I'm going to revitalize to draw. Probably Mortify to make sure this puppy doesn't flip. Watery Graves. It's okay. We're going to blow up a Dauntless Bodyguard. We're going to plan on Kai's Wrathing. So this is covering that one. So 
So I want to do this now. So this is protecting that one. This one. So now this is protecting no one. So our opponent messed up. Our opponent could have sacrificed one Dauntless Bodyguard to protect the other Dauntless Bodyguard, which seems equivalent, right? Except it's not equivalent, because in a spot like this, there, this Dauntless Bodyguard is protecting nothing. CC. 742, 300 bits says, hey, day nine. Yesterday my girlfriend and I broke up and all your breakup and happiness videos have really been helping me get through. Been staying active and focused. Thanks for the sage advice and all the more in years to come. I'm happy to hear you're feeling better, but sorry about the breakup, man. Breakups, breakups suck, man. Breakups are big old piles of poop. Truth, truth be told. Let's go ahead and pay two life and just get rid of this whole problem that we got here. Nothing, nothing's protected. Kai's Wrath could have done a lot less. Alright, great. Alright, let's see what we get. Alright, well, let's just go ahead and pay this life and do this now. Yep, send that one back to the hand. That's good. What could I possibly want from an unmoored ego here? I think I know. I think I know. So I'm going to unmoored ego the opponent, and I'm going to name Conclave Tribunal. Because I can win this game by getting Lyra from the sideboard. So let's look. There's one here. Banalish. There's the Unbreakable Formation. Okay. There's some in here. This lo is looking like a mono white weenie deck. There's no blue, so there's no other ones. So let's just get these. I don't think there's any in here. Yeah, so it's, it's just the usual white weenies deck, which is fine. And our opponent can draw another one, and this is, this is fine by us. I don't feel the need to shock anything else in, so I'll just do this. And then we can Kaya's Wrath for like a billion next turn. What's win condition of this deck? Um... The win condition is the sideboard, due to this card, Mastermind's Acquisition. Choose a card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand. So we can, like, choose a Lyra from outside the game and put that one into our hand. So, I think that one of these two puppies is coming down. Goodbye. I would assume... Wow, I completely forgot about that card. Man. I literally was looking right at it. Whoopsie doopsie. I'm gonna take some serious pain next turn. It's all good though. Sometimes you just screw the pooch. So I got a Mastermind's Acquisition to find another Kaya's Wrath on the side. Kind of stinks that our opponent's going to be able to flip this Legion's Landing. We blunderdy dunderdied. So let's see, we've used a Kaya's Wrath and a Kaya's Wrath, so we should use this to find a Kaya's Wrath, right? That's going to flip. Ah, no venerated, no venerated at all. Are you sure? You didn't wish to do that before? Are you sure? You could have done no damage to us and had larger dudes. What now, Damien BC31? My poor cat's meowing. I got a sad cat. Very sad cat. I have to shock this one in. So we'll be going to one. Nah, we're not going to do anything like that. We're just going to do this main phase. It's very lucky of us. Now, I'm just going to Dovin's. Plan on doing some Mortification, some Vraska's Contempting. Things like this in my main. 
we would have had to Mastermind's Acquisition to find that from our hand. But now we really don't have to, so. Like, we really, really, really don't have to. So, we're almost there. We've almost done it. Yeah, I'd, I'd be thrilled to take that action. That'd be really great. Yep. So we're just going to play this again. Isn't this deck just hilarious? Oh, that seems good. I'm doing this main phase to just keep returning this to the hand. So this is five and this is four. Great. <laughs> it's a real jerk deck, I will admit. Shout out to BBD for the deck list. I'm keeping this because we have the unmoored ego in the hand. It's a total jerk deck. Is there any way your deck wins? Yeah, sideboard. So, for instance, we have unmoored egoed. For in that game, we unmoored egoed, whatever the verb form of that is. We use unmoored ego on Conclave Tribunal, so now our opponent has no way to remove creatures. We summon a Lyra Dawnbringer, and we just beat the shit out of him with that. Pretty cool, right? Breeding Pool bodes well for us against a Nexus of Fate deck. All right, we, we have an opportunity to just win the game right now, so I'm just going to take that. Syncopate. <laughs> oh, shit, we did it. All right, there we go. Well, there's one. See the Wilderness Reclamation, Depose and Deploy. So we see the Nexus of Fates there. What are the win conditions do they have? They have a Teferi. They have some Teferis. There's a March of the Multitudes. Uh, so a lot of Teferis and March. March is basically it. March and Teferi. Okay, so let's just get these out. It's very satisfying, huh? Very, very satisfying. The next card that we're going to delete is... Almost certainly March of the Multitudes. Very easy to lose against March of the Multitudes. Super, super easy, actually. Started with Unmoored Ego versus Gates decks. Probably the Colossus. Probably the Colossus. Colossus seems about right. Probably gonna just pick this off. This is an important one to pick off, right? That's good. Take two damage. Yeah, I would I would probably delete the gate Colossus is the big one, because that, that is the huge recurring threat. of a use for this card. I don't see a reason to try to speed things up. I, I think that using... well... You got it, man. What do I actually want this Mastermind's Acquisition for? I know exactly the card. That's a very good one to get. So we're just going to use this. There's two cards that we need to win this game. Um, Immortal Sun is a very good one, because that completely shuts down our opponent's shit. Oh, that's so good. I think, I think I'm going to get the Immortal Sun first.
Because then we'll be drawing to a turn, and then I feel like we're going to be capable of drawing the answer that we need as time goes on. Hello. So Dalahan now has one way to win, which is the March of the Multitudes. Um... You got it, man. So now Teferi doesn't help. It's basically going to be Wilderness Reclamation into a gigantic March of the Multitudes. And even then, that's a bit of a spotty possibility. Like, if we just Masterminds Acquisition and get Ethereal Absolution, then that's game. So right now, there's no Nexus, there's no Teferi. Moment of Cravings are nice. But the thing about March of the Multitudes, to get the maximum March of the Multitudes effect, it would have to be at Dal Ahan's end step, which is when I would have the most number of opportunities to draw the things that I need to draw. Great. So, I mean, I think that this was the smart decision, because this shuts down to fairies, of which there's more of them in the deck. So I'm taking care of the bigger threats first. Uh, yeah, we're just going to hang out a little bit. Then we masterminds acquisition for Ethereal Absolution. We start exiling shit. And, uh... Alright, let's see what how our opponent wishes to win now. We've used one masterminds acquisition. We have three in the deck. So once we have disabled all these threats... Don't care. I really would prefer to cycle the Dovin Securities. Draw. Draw. So this is three, and the ethere Ethereal Absolution will be one cheaper. Perfect. So we did it. We won the game. Choose a card you own from outside the game. Let's do this. No counters in our opponent's deck, so we can now play Ethereal Absolution. And our opponent now can no longer cast March of the Multitudes. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> Alright. I mean, I'm telling you, like, if you literally have removed every single answer in their entire deck, like, there's no Nexuses, there's no Teferis, there's no March of the Multitudes, so there's precisely nothing that my opponent can do to impact me, period. Uh, when that's the status, ooh, I go first. I think I keep... This feels like just these... Feel like reasonable enough. That's a little. Hmm. But yeah, and then at that point, we literally just peel to fairy and win with that. All right, our opponent has mulligan to four. I expect to concede in a moment because MTGN FL four one nine two one. It's down to three. Down to three. It happens. All right, <laughs> we're doing well. We're doing well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place Hallowed Fountain first. Alright. You know, interestingly, this is a breeding pool. So, MTG NFL. 41-9-21. Oh, it's... It's a Golgari deck. It's a wet Golgari. Welcome to my hand. Now, typically, mana screw beats mana flood. Typically, typically, typically. I think we're going to get there. This deck is really suffers in best of three. Would be my intuition. <laughs> Great. We have the card draw we need. We can almost do some of our removal. Sipaufe, huh? Alright, 
Alright, so we, we see the Goblet Shrine first. I would assume we're up against Esper. It's the only thing that makes sense. There's just like not a lot of Orzhov, Mardu being run at all. Alright, it's my turn. Hello, my name is Day9. Welcome to my turn. So, how do I want even to do this, huh? How do I want to do this? I mean, I guess big blue, big blur. Probably going to be running some amount of counters. Revitalize. Probably don't want a Mastermind's acquisition at all. Probably don't want to do that. Alright, we got a Snorefest, Boarfest, baby. Hello. Still just think we, like, don't do it, man. Probably double radical idea at end of turn, something like that. Chemisters inside. Now, what what would be the most disabling move we could do against Bluebird? Like, I would expect something like land to fairy. Ah, uh, this happens sometimes. This happens. I'd present with you this blank screen. All right, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, why, why does it do this sometimes? Why are you lagging? Why? Why are you lagging so much? I actually am I'm a little confused as to when and why this happens. It seems to have just repaired itself, so. Um, all right, let's pass. Can you hear me? Hope you can. Teferi is the new Thrag Tusk. Oh my god, Thrag Tusk was disgusting. Thrag Tusk was this card. How much did it cost? It was a 5-3 that when it entered the battlefield, you gained 5 life, and when it exited the battlefield, you got to put a 3-3 three, three out. Now, I want to really stress something. It's when it exits the battlefield, right? I think I did just cry the Carnarium. Just keep getting land. Cost four and a green. That sounds right. Yeah. Upon exiting the battlefield, that's, that's the thing that made it truly gross. Because, given that it was on exit... Um, it meant that if it was exiled, it still summoned a 3-3 at the end. Are we here right now? Okay. First I was like, oh my god, I do it during my main phase. Like, Dragon on Morty, go out. Best one, best one indeed, man. Thrag Tusk was real. Thrag Tusk and Restoration Angel. Oh my god. Yeah, you, there was also a, a, an effect called Flicker, which is the thing leaves the battlefield and then immediately returns to the battlefield. Now, why would you do that? Because there's a whole lot of things that have an enter the battlefield effect. You know, when this creature, like take a Ravenous Chupacabra, which is in this current meta, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature. It's really nice to be able to exile it and boom, return it right back, and then it gets to destroy another target creature. Frames again? No, no, frames are good. Frames are all good. We're not dropping any frames. Lies are our woods. Lies. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just do this and also get rid of this fucking thing. Yeah, looks good. I have my I have my monitor to check on things right here. There's my confidence monitor right down there. You're such a good confidence monitor. 
Hello. Hello. Alright, it's my turn again. Looks like no one's doing nothing for nobody. So if I did this, it would just get like hard countered. So I'm just gonna I think I think we're we're doing the waiting game. I think I'm gonna outpatience you. Hey, what's going down, dude? Hello. But yeah, anyways, like the whole idea of the, the flicker effect um, of exit and come back in, it's a really cool idea, and Wizards, I think, just made it like a keyword during the exact same time that Thrag Tusk was a thing. So you had creatures like Restoration Angel that when it enters a battlefield, it exiles something and brings it back. Was it Restoration Angel? Pretty sure it was Restoration Angel. Yep. Three and white. Flash flying. When Restoration enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-angel creature, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. Now, what would I possibly want with Mastermind's acquisition that I can't just get right now? Unmoored Ego does seem pretty tight, but I feel like there's just a handful of counters here. So what I really want to do is I would really love to do something like opponent plays Teferi. I, in response, Vraska's Contempt the Teferi. That gets countered. Then I unmoored Ego to delete all other Teferis. And then I cross my fingers and hope uh, to be able to kill that off. What if this is the Mirror Mash? That would surprise me. I'm running a very weird deck. This is a, a very weird Esper control list. Okay, so here's my two unmoored egos, and I have to cast something. So I think I'm going to try that Mastermind's Acquisition to get something that I own from outside the game. And I actually am going to go for the um, Immortal Sun here. I think the Immortal Sun's probably the best choice for us. Because this can't destroy artifacts. So, I mean, I have to unmoor to Ego now. Hello. So, Bluebird might just be like, okay, this is my perfect opportunity to Teferi. And then I have Vraska's Contempt followed up by another unmoor Ego. Great. So, now we don't have to discard a card. And again, I expect Bluebird to go Teferi and untap. So, it would have to be both one, two, uh, another. I guess there could be two more Absorbs. There's Teferi. Teferi to draw. So then I will Vraska's Contempt and no Unmoored problem. Ego. Didn't counter the Master's Mind. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it has no real idea what it is that we're doing. Search for his Kanta. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we're 100%. We're going to exile Teferi. It's our first play, right? So first things first, we exile Teferi. Would not be surprised if this gets uh, countered. Would really not be surprised. Using these three or something. Or like this. Great. So rather than try to unmoor to Ego right now, it's more important for me to kill this Search for Escanta. Oh, I should have done it on our opponent's upkeep. This is a little bit sloppy by me. The, the general play, I think, is correct, but... Um, I should have just blown this damn thing up. Um, I mean, if this lands, I would actually expect Blue Burr doesn't have a counter. Huh. Okay. Well, now this is really cool, because if we draw a land, then what we... So, here comes another Teferi, right? <laughs> okay, so... Um, I really kind of want to slam this puppy. I think I actually I'm just gonna slam it. I I th that kind of weirds me out that there was two non. Oh, okay, was that off the top? I guess not. <laughs> All right, so that one's that one's a little bit better. What's the difference with doing it on their upkeep? If they counter and it's on their upkeep, they're spending mana on their turn instead of on our turn. It's two absorbs, good. Hello, I'm tapping out. Yeah, all right. Vraska's Contempt. That's pretty tight.
So here, here's actually how I'm going to do it. I'm going to pay the two life here. I'm going to go ahead and Mastermind's Acquisition. Get a card from outside the game. Again, this can be countered, and that's totally fine. Notice our opponent's actually running pretty low on cards. So I'm, I'm just going to do this right now. Totally plausible that our opponent has another counter. Totally reasonable. Whoop. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. We're just going to hit the Dunzo button. So it looks like there's a bunch of removal, which we would expect in a best of one. And now we get to peek through the library. There's a Kaya there. That's a pretty cool one. So it's a good thing we have Vraska's Contempt. There's a pair of Negates. There's a second Kaya. It's probably good. Wow, there's not even a Chromium. There's no creatures. This is literally a Kaya Teferi deck. So if we kill Teferi, what that means is that we're going to have long-term big card advantage because we're going to be able to outdraw the shit out of our opponent. Right, let me just hit that. Let me just make sure there's two Kayas, right? I didn't miss a Chromium. Let's count the negates too, right? Because there's a pair of negates. There's no doubt going to be a third and fourth absorb. There's the third absorb. There's the fourth absorb. Okay, so there's only four more counters in the deck. So we pretty much just annihilated. We get rid of Kaya's, it's just game. Uh huh. I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm just going to get rid of this Cry of the Carnarium. Great. This is really common in game one of Esper versus Esper. We both have a bunch of removal that we can't really do anything with. Alright, so if we get Kaya, Urzov, Usurper. There they are. Let's just make sure again that there's nothing here. All right, we did it. But now how do we win? Probably... I'm actually not sure how we win. I think we just wait for our opponent to deck themselves. Which is cruel. That's, I mean, that's gotta be the play, right? Yeah, we win. We're a monster. What can I say? Anything I can mastermind? There's only there's only one card that I think would make sense to mastermind there, which would be Clear the Mind, which is where you shuffle your graveyard back into your library. Alright. So how do you sideboard against this deck? Dude, I, I have not even thought about the sideboard plan. Seems like an acceptable one. We have the double black that we'll need for a lot of our sweeper spells. All right, cool. So this is a matchup that I'm really interested in, how it's going to play out. It appears to be against Mono Red. Asini GG says, Sean, don't you feel disgusted by yourself? Oh, of course, absolutely. So this is the matchup where we hope that we have enough life gain. Helps some. Ugh. Kai's Wrath is generally not amazing against yes, red. I'm just gonna cycle through with the radical idea. I'm hoping it's gonna be a chain whirler. Or like a Gitu Lava Runner. Like one of the two's fine. We just want like maximum stuff on the board that we can actually get value out of. Expect our opponent to actually have just a ton of burn in the hand. This doesn't look good. I mean, double Vraska's Contempt is nice. Mastermind's Acquisition, also nice. Because we can get a Sanguine Sacrament and, like, mega heal.
Lava Runner's fine. Alright, so we're gonna go to five. Well, this feels more or less like I'm a dead man. So we'll go back to seven, which is pretty good. Putting in lots and lots and lots of stops. Alright, that's good. There's no more hasty boys. Does our opponent have nothing that's instant speed? Because that just passed right through there. Right, we're right back to where we were before. But now, we are made even cooler with the additional mana. I think our opponent might actually just have a bunch of experimental frenzies in hand. That's a painful one. Okay. So our opponent was not able to do any sort of damage to our face. We don't think it's Wizard's Lightning. We don't think it's... Um... Okay, here, here's what I actually think the play is. I think we just do this. And we just get the Sanguine Sacrament. Gain twice X life. Is it snuggle time? Is it evening snuggle time? Holy shit, that's not good for us at all. All right. You're a good cat, Sheriff. Oh, that's a good cat. All right. Cry, cries sorcery speed, tragically. All right, so we're at two. It's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, but I don't think that's good enough. Cry would save three damage, right? It's sorcery speed, so we can't actually cast it at that point in time. What a good cat. I mean, I think, I think, I think we've got to do a little bit of crossing our fingers and hope to die here. You know what I mean? It's plausible that we, we're dead right now. Bonk. And we dead. How's your day been? Hi, sweetheart. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Tell me. Tell me what's, what's been going on. Alright. Goodbye. You don't have to tell me anything. Should have dove and then cried now. Oh, what would be the difference, Silent Scars? We're just killing stuff and gaining it, too. Oh, I see what you mean. No, Dovin's only comes back when we cast Instance. Not when we cast Sorceries. Yeah, this seems like an acceptable opening hand.
Revitalize instead of Sanguine, so we could have played it that turn. That might have been the play. That might have been. My Not 100% on it, though. The reason I say it is, like, technically, yes, Revitalize does permit us the ability to cast ourselves on that turn, but then we'd just sort of be like, well... Why did I not use Sanguine to survive? Uh, Spun Silver, can you can you explain what your logic is? Like, how we could have actually been using it to survive? By the way, this frame drop shit, I, I don't actually know what's going on, because we're not actually dropping frames in the encode. Like, it's actually rendering with the droppy frames. Yeah, didn't do anything. Look, it's gone. It's perfect. Throwing away the land instead of Dying Sun was a mistake. Plan on using Sanguine. Plausibly, it was a shock land, I will note. It was a shock land. But yeah, we were in the position where. Um, are you sure not accidentally moving? 10 frames per second. Also, uh, since we're already on to this game, it's always super helpful if. Um, if you can provide screenshots for things to which you are referring. Super duper helpful. So we're going to do this on our opponent's upkeep. There's almost certainly a dive down from Mason Clark, but that's fine. Yes, yeah, Spun Silver, give me give me a screenshot. Give me a screenshot of what you're talking about. Super helpful. Perfect. See, this is why we this is why we do this on our opponent's turn. Because then we're in this position where, well, I guess a land could come down, so we could get spell pierce, which would stink. So I think this is actually how I'm going to play this. I'm just going to. Cry the Carnarium first. Playing around Spell Pierce. Psh. Playing a little with fire here. Obviously, a counter spell just totally blows us out of the water, but I think this was the. This plays around Spell Pierce, but not around Wizard's Retort, which it looks like they got, so that's game. GG. If I actually, I believe we have an advantage in that match. I believe we have an advantage in that match. We have a lot of moment of cravings. Maybe, maybe that was a bad keep with the cry of the Carnariums, but... Since when do I know what I'm doing, huh? Why do you get nuked? Oh, Craspel's Craspel's linked to some meme image, one of those like jabate type things. So we just give him a quick timeout. Just a little quick timeout. We're not in the mood for that here. <laughs> That's right. Everyone says that. Our opponent, or uh, yes, Craspel's wrote. Here's a link to the board state and links you to something that was not the board state. So should should be completely untimeouted though now. So I, I think that in this spot, um, I would have wanted to cry the Carnarium. Did I miss a Revitalize? No, I did it right there, okay. I would have wanted to cry the Carnarium, but I don't have enough mana. We gotta, we gotta chuck something. 
think this hallowed fountain has done us enough good. Um. Oops. Oops. Yeah, oops. Oopsie doopsie. Oopsie darn doopsie. Alright. I didn't play the black mana. <laughs> I was fiddling with something in a mod panel. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, come on. Getting thought erasure, it's not that big of a deal. I think that th this seems like a matchup that we can win pretty handily. Because this says whenever you uh, cast an instant spell during the main phase, you return it. So we can get this Raska's Contempt returned. Hey, who, who here is totally hooked on Dota 2 Auto Chess? I played a, uh, two weekends ago. By the way, the, in, in this uh, mid-range beatdown deck, the Basilica Bellhaunts, like, is, it is totally like their biggest card. Alright, I think I'm going to play this, because I want to be able to cast this. Could be a counter. No big deal, we got it. Yeah, I think I want to take this. Hey, Craspels, you there? Because I gave you a little time out, and then I haven't seen you type anymore, and I want to make sure you don't feel bad. Oh, shit, I didn't type in the correct command. All right, Craspels, I'm sorry. I, I thought I untime outed you, but I realized I just mistyped. It was supposed to be a one second, a one second thingaroo. I'm sorry, Craspels, I'm sorry. I fully intended to do a one second timeout and so I just like fucking gave you a 10 minute timeout. No! Carlos, okay, I was really confused by that statement. Yeah. <laughs> I screwed the pooch on that one. Whoopsie tripsy. That's like so funny, like I. I thought I gave a one second timeout, and it was a ten minute timeout, and I was like, oh, okay, and I like, uh, typed unban, but that's like not a command. It's like, no, it doesn't do anything. Let's skip to the good part. And then I started to be like, hey, you doing okay, Graspels? Yeah, no, yeah, everything's fine, we just give you a little bop on the head, and you're like, I literally am still banned. <laughs> well, I think the play is to... Do I do this now? Yeah. Gobbled. <laughs> Alright, whatever you want, you got a Polyrus. It's just that I, I, I'm not someone who's okay being with just one Russ at a time, and that's why I'm Polyrus. <laughs> well, the good news is, this is your biggest creature. So what do I want to name? Probably Teferi. So Thief of Sanity is like a real pain in the ass for us, and, and we're going to get deleted next turn. That kind of stinks for us. Two Teferi is in there, so we got some Bell Haunts. Oh, there's Carny Boys. Okay, Ritual of Soots and Moment of Cravings. Don't need to worry about that. Oh, there's a Lyra in there as well. Okay, so we're just going to get this, and we're going to get this. Yeah, three, three's about right. Washunk, washunk. You're getting Thought Erasure and then Thief of Sanity. Have a swamp. Thief of Sandy is the one I'm actually worried about. <laughs> Karn, Scion of Urza. Yeah, a radical idea would be really good here. Like a radical idea or something. Thief of 
Beef of Sanity is going to be a pain. Mm. God, I just call it every time, don't I? What a sicko. Ah, we're going to lose our Masterminds acquisition list, uh, next turn, which does suck a whole bunch. Although our opponent might minus to get that uh, Mortify back out of there. What do I actually want to use my Masterminds acquisition to get? I feel like the Immortal Sun is a good one to get. Because that just lets us begin to get that sweet, sweet card advantage. Yeah. You gotta get the Mastermind's Acquisition out. Well, this is good. It means that we are aptly defended. Don't do it, Bellhaunt. Oh! Alright, this game's gonna be a bit. Boom. I think I do have to chuck something to draw with my radical idea. I mean, the Immortal Sun is just like the absolute nuts here, man. It appears that I am no longer going to be radical idea-ing. I have a swamp, dude. Play your Thief of Sanity. So good. Is that my favorite brown cat? Sheriff. You doing good? Okay, you want to be pet. I hear you. I'm going to pet you then. You hear this little cat screaming like crazy, man? pet you. Okay, she just wants to sit here and rub against my leg. It's fine. It's a good leg. I've worked hard on this leg. You are a good cat. Oh, here we go. Come on. Yep. There it is. There it is. Come on up. Yes. Oh my god, we're really happy now. Oh, what a relief. Oh, yes, it's dad. It's dad. Mortal Sun one time. Alright. Let me go ahead and hang on to this hand just like this. You know what? I have a moment of craving, dude. No land for you. I love this cat. I love this cat more than anything in the entire world. If they were like, society will collapse tomorrow. Unless you give up your cat. I'm like, fuck him. Let him burn. I love my cat. It's the right shoulder. She's on the right shoulder. It's her favorite shoulder. Sometimes she's like, what's going on on that left shoulder? Abandons halfway through the process. So let's actually do some counting. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11. 12. And 12 land in the top 30. We're actually a little below expectation. We should be drawn a modicum more land. God, this experience is so good. Oh my god. Yes. Well, that kind of stinks. Nuking him. Boom. This feels really good. I really like this cat. So if they're like, no one has to go to the dentist ever again, as long as you give up your cat, be like, fuck them. They can, they can buy new teeth, man. It's fine. They can go upside down. 
This doesn't really change that much for us, does it? I'll wait till end step. Okay, that's a better one to ditch. Let's see what let's see what happens first. You know, have a ritual set. Look at this. No one will ever have to exercise again to stay in perfect health. Like, nope, I'll keep the cat. Keep the cat, that's fine. You guys can go to the gym. W were there negates in this player's deck? Alright, nice little play. Our opponent has correctly identified that we don't have creatures, so by moment of craving-ing their own creature, they gain two life, but I don't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's fine. She just, she's been working really hard lately. Like an Elvis Reborn. It. Do we see Elvis Reborns in there? I don't know. I don't know. Looks like I uh, found an Elvis Reborn. Pretty good at getting this like radical idea of Dovin's thing. Oh yeah, let's take let's take that action. That seems fine. I think I'd like to uh, draw. That, my friends, is why we run Radical Idea over Opt. It's tough to be a cat, you know. Spent all day doing cat-based activities. Ditch the land. Gotta look at birds. You know what? Take this watery grave, dude. What do you even bring back from the dead? A Basilica Bell Haunt? Is that what you do? Is that what you bring back? Get some of the Dovin going. I'm gonna go ahead and not play any of this stuff. Oops, I forgot to mortify that. That probably would have been a good mortify target, but that's fine. Yeah. I mean I'd rather I'd rather this be the outcome. You know what? Take the watery grave, dude. I don't actually think we can lose this. I think our opponent's planning on decking themselves. I just, I can't be with only one rest. I need to be with poly rest. Alright, so let's just moment of creating this. Seems pretty cool, huh? Boop. Take action. Yeah, I mean, is, poly rest has got 12, 12 in the... In the in the deck. A lot of threats. Falco Jam got a gifted sub. Hell yeah. What is up, Falco Jam? Right, let's just cycle this. We're hanging out at 36. Yeah, let's go. I'll take the action. Seems pretty tight. Mortify. Alright, seems good. Seems good. I'm just gonna go ahead and do security. Seems good. The most difficult thing I've ever tried to do is to clear the mind. Alright, we got a Masterminds in there. We got two more Masterminds acquisitions, I think. What was lost is now I want Lyra to try to win the game. Isn't this deck just a real dick deck? This is a real dick deck. You're a sweet cat. So I'm just gonna main phase Mortify. That seems pretty good. I'm gonna save one Mortify for the... Invariable Eldest Reborn. Play this. Uh, I think I'll just do this. I have no need to kill this thing. Yeah, I think our opponent's gonna learn pretty soon, like, oh my gosh, I'm starting to run out of options here. I gotta hurry up and Even kill stuff. But, you know, somewhere in here, there is, I swear, there's gonna be an immortal sun. It's 
pretty good. So this is our second Masterminds acquisition, right? Yeah, I may as well reach outside the game. I don't think there's any negates in there. I just do this in kind of like an immortal way. I think this is right when Polyrust just gets thee gone, you know? Plays the game of get thee to a nunnery. Got 10 cards in the library. I got 16, which might look low. That's fine. We don't need to draw that much, man. Put the second Dovin's Acuity in the grave. People, oh, it's the third, man. People fear Dovin. Oh my gosh, this is so great. And Verm says, I don't know a lot about magic, but 43 seems like a lot. It's qu it's quite some. It's quite some, dude. Rawr. Get that one out of there. It seems good. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no more threat of things getting built because this immortal sun is disabling planeswalkers. <laughs> Mastermind's acquisition. It's all we need. I'm going to do this now because Mastermind's acquisition is sorcery speed, so I want to draw it. I'm just, I'm just going to dig for it because there's literally no way that we can deck ourselves. I don't believe there's a single counter in Polly Russ's deck. I mean, this is, this is, I just, I just don't remember. I just literally don't remember, so I'm just going to do this now. So he has a bunch of removal. Eldest Reborn. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it, dude. There you go. All right, let's get this one out. Let's play one of these. Get this one back. I was pretty sure I didn't see any gate. Should have been a little bit more diligent about that. Now, I'm pretty sure I still have a Mastermind's Acquisition, right? I want to keep investigating this. Once again, it's possible for me to deck myself if I only had two Mastermind's Acquisitions, but I, I'm pretty sure I have three. Not 100% on it. Not 100% on anything in my life anymore. Grass is the only Mastermind you need is yourself. Oh. This is going to hurt Polyrus a lot. It's going to hurt Polyrus. It'll be like bee stings in the eyes right now, man. Uh-oh. We are down to 45. How does Mastermind save you from decking yourself? And this real nasty card that's in the sideboard. Maybe maybe now's Mastermind's acquisition? I mean, I'm willing to just dove in for it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just going to... You have to be super careful. Super careful. It's very, it's very easy to deck. You know, take the action. Very easy to deck. So I, I might have to math this out properly. There we go. So we go choose a card from outside the game, and we're going to choose Clear the Mind. So target player shuffles their library into their graveyard. So I'm going to go ahead and cast this, and this player shuffles their library into their graveyard. There we go. All right. <laughs> Your turn. I got 36 cards in the deck. You got seven. All right. Got him. <laughs> God, my mind feels so clear. Library into graveyard? Ah, same thing. Same thing. Graveyard into library has that commutative property that I hear so much good, good word about. Same thing, man. Same thing. It's not commutative, that's the associative property, excuse me. A plus B equals B plus A, that's the associative property. I can't believe I'm forgetting that. Associative property. That's like one of those basic algebraic things that I need to know. God, 
associative, commutative, commutative abstract algebra. <sighs> what? Commutative. Oh, fuck, that's right. Associative is A plus B plus C is the same as A plus B plus C. Yeah, commutative is you switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep this. So we're just going to go ahead and unmoored Ego and Nexus player. God, that's, this is like fundamental algebraic shit, man. So embarrassed. Because those are the three, man. It's associative, commutative, and transitive. Transitive, everyone knows, man. If you don't know transitive, then you're a real piece of shit. <laughs> Oh, you think you're good at shocking things in? Well, let me tell you something, Buster. Get out of there. So how do we how do we lose against Honest Bob, who appears to be a Sultai deck? Because I mean, there's no Nexus of Fate deck that's going to be running a Lana or Elf. This has easy enough to deal with. I think here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna like pay the life, and I'm just I'm just gonna declare hy hydroid crisis right now. Okay, that's an easily avoidable hand. Uh, in the library, we see four of those crazy boys. So we see the usual jade light merfolk. There's a pretty good amount of creature removal. There's two Vraskas, and we see in the hand there's an assassin's trophy and a cast down. One Hostage Taker, certainly going to be some Vivian Reeds, some Chupacabras, some Recursion of Fine Finality. Yeah, wow, a third Vivian Reed. That's kind of remarkable. This is an extraordinarily greedy deck. There's four Fine Finalities? Hot dilly damn. I'm happy to say see you later. better bots as I'm confused. Transitivity applies to relations, not binary operators. Yeah, I, I think I don't see your point. I'm gonna main phase this. I so wish to have land. Th those are like the three things that Joy's gotta know so much about. Associative, commutative, transitive. Distributive property, how there's such things. So let's see, Immortal Sun. Immortal Sun has some issues. So we're going to do this. And then I, I think I'm just going to like Radical Radical. I mean, I'd like to get an Immortal Sun, but this Assassin's Trophy is kind of a... Kind of a douche. Oh, you're just because I was grouping them together, is this new better bot? Oh, yeah, yeah, I I totally know what you mean. I mean, especially when it comes to math, where, like, math and computer science are often about extremely precise definitions, and I'm just, like, saying a bunch of words together that are, like, not necessarily applicable to the same stuffs. I feel you, man. Cameron Vargas says, I'm in linear algebra and differential equations. We had to prove all those properties for matrix mathematics. God damn, I love linear algebra. I Fucking loved linear algebra. That was one of those math courses that I just like slam dunked, dude. I had such arrogance about my ability to understand like matrix multiplication and shit, man. <laughs> We're not under any threats, we don't need to cast any spells. Casting spells is for losers. Now our opponent can maybe be like, oh, that's a good one to Assassin's Trophy, I want to get rid of that one. And then I'll be like, ah, the sun is immortal. Hey, look at this. End of turn. Assassin's Trophy. No problem. Cast it. Do it. Do it. Cast it. Cast it. Go. Do it. You know what? Look at this. <laughs> I cannot handle the pain. <laughs> when Frankenstein touched fire for the first time, was Frankenstein was the doctor. You're all banned if you say Frankenstein was the doctor. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Math's great, man. I love math. Like, I, I really hated real analysis. Like, continuous maths, man. Blech. 
I mean, I, I just I just keep every hand because I don't care. I you know I hate I hate continuous math. I like it a hell of a lot more now that I do a lot of stuff with neural networks. Like a hell of a lot more. Um, all right, we have Kemal Paul is once again doing that good old sweet sweet. Actually, I can just do this, right? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pay this life, man. I don't give a damn. I'm doing that wet Golgari. It is a blue splash in a green black deck. Jade Light. Guess what? I got a radical idea, which is that I get to draw and you don't. Ba -ba -boom, boom, 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 boom. Right, now, what is the best possible play at this juncture, huh? Here's what I think the best possible play is. It's to play the thing that has double black and to just cry about it. Ooshie douche. Forget about abstract algebra and math. Stuff got so confusing. Oh, yeah. Abstract algebra was... I think I took that as a freshman or a sophomore. Like, freshman, sophomore was just all foundational, like, discrete math. Um, linear algebra. All that sort of foundational junkaroo. Alright, now we could Mastermind's Acquisition to get a Kaya's Wrath. That does seem pretty good. You can also do this. I think it's probably better to just do this and find the Kaya's Wrath, yeah. Stuff that I did in my second, uh, or my third and fourth years was just, like, heavy discrete math focus. So, like, graph theory, number theory, combinatorics. Oh, so much combinatorics. Fucking love combinatorics. Love it. Nathrism says, just stopping in to say you are awesome. Tomorrow will be better. Keep on being simply amazing. Also, have you seen Bandersnatch? <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for saying that, man. I'm, I, I'm having a strong case of the Mondays today where I'm feeling... Sluggish brained and slow, slow brained, frown minded. Shower of Beers says, Sean, do you have a master's in math or is this all bachelors? This is all bachelors. All bachelors. This is bachelor mode. Go ahead and start the infamous. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Leibniz notation says doing a PhD, researching algebraic geometry right now, but using lots of combinatorial tools to do it. Fun stuff. Oh my god, dude! Like algebraic topology and algebraic geometry are just like so fucking abstract as to like no longer have meaning. It's just like I'm just like looking at it like I don't, I don't know, I don't even know if like why. Well, I don't, I don't know. Kaya's Wrath would be tight. Do I want to just nuke this? Are there any enchantments that our opponent could be? I, I think I think I just I think I just shoot like this. I should have played the fountain. Take action. Take action. Yeah, my graduate degree is in interactive media. The Immortal Sean. Oh, I needed to nuke the Wild Growth Walker. We already knew that was in the hand. Just not thinking anymore. We have the Immortal Sons uh, for the Invariable Vivian. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. Shit, that's pretty bad. So we're at six, so we need to we need to get some more health here. I think I've I think I've discovered the solution. Never didn't have it. Great. There's that mm mm acquisition. Yeah. Alright. 
Deontay Morton says, Sean, what percentage of your viewer demographic do you think has a math degree or is currently studying for one? Because I bet it's high. This is... The Daily TV community is pretty technical. Crazy boys. Unmoored ego is nice here. There's actually not that much land here, so I'm not I'm not that torn up about it. I mean this this play seems pretty good, because now I can mortify and just destroy this. Well, uh, I'd imagine there's a lot of CS, math, CS, CS, physics, pure math. <laughs> Nick in the Sky says, I'm a business administration major. Lol. Wireless engineering. Everyone of says, shout out to all my liberal arts homies. Hell yeah. Organic chemistry from Jave Donson. Miranda says PhD in education over here. Damn, that's like so hardcore. I'm drawing. And I'm drawing. Alright, I think I think we're just gonna have ourselves a grand old time here. Let's just play this one at a time before we slam the land. Probably gonna eventually want. If I cast this now, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's important for me to just pretty swiftly here just get rid of the okay. get rid of the enemy's hope. All right, we hit diamond tier one, tight. I'm telling you, best of one is so much easier to rank up in than in best of threes. Players are just so good. Fuck. It's... I was like totally planning on being a math professor when I, ever since like I was in, God, like third grade or something. I was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna study math. I'm just gonna go into math, 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 math. Math, 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 math. Oh, this is a nice little hand. Oh, look at this little hand. And then uh, when I was in my senior year, I was just, I think I was actually kind of burnt out on math, man. Because I was just like, dude, I, oh my god, I just, it's like so hard. It's all so abstract. <laughs> this is so great. Look at all, look at all these sources of black. Mm. Log out, submit, need help, is mono red. All right, we we will likely die unless we just peel off the top our good friend, Moment of Craving, because here comes the Steam Ken. Anytime you're against a red deck that, oh yeah, no, it's perfect, never didn't have it. Anytime you're up against a red deck that does nothing on turn one, the probability of a Steam Ken is like enormous. So I did the same thing, but I was going to be a history professor. Very nearly did it. I decided to pass on the PhD programs I got into. Is it okay for me to do one of these? I'm going to enter tapped, and I'm just going to pass the turn through. So probably not Wizard's Lightning, because we would have supposed a Wizard Lightning would go straight for the dome in the last turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to accept two damage here. Let's just do a little draw. Cool. Land. All right. Nice. All right. Okay. Oh, oh God. Oh. Ooh. Ah. Oh. oh, my God. It's the monkey. Welcome, monkey. I mean, I kind of, I kind of just have to cry, right? We're doing pretty good being at 17 life. I guess 15 life. 
Our opponent didn't tap ping with the monkey. Ah, yes, erroneous monkey usage. Victory is mine. My opponent thought that he could not use his diagonal monkey. He has become sorely mistaken. All right, so if we just draw Mortify, we just immediately destroy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do something radical here. Super, super duper radical, huh? Yeah, I mean, finding the Mortify is the hardest part. Casting is the easier part. Oh. Oh. You guys are killing me. Oof. Alas, my face. Okay. All right. A lot of land. Alright, the good news is that we have the land that we need. Ow. I was, I was feeling pretty good about this game. Feeling pretty good. Our opponent got land flooded too, so it's not like we're getting too unlucky. No, don't. Ow. N no. Oh. You better not pass. Here's my tap land. Cool. Alright. So, I mean, like, I'm not really sure what we need here. I, we're pretty boned at this point. Play this first. Hopefully another Experimental Frenzy is right there, and it gets played. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Alright, so the only way that we can really win this is just a good old Kaya's Wrath right now. But we're gonna, we're gonna take three. Please, please stop. Oh my god. Please, it's enough. It's enough, just make it stop. How much is Kai's? Kai's is four, so I mean, we can cast it, but I would be surprised if we live through the turn. Alright, here we go. We're gonna go for... I'm thinking Kai's Wrath here, yeah? So, I, what I kind of expect to happen is to just get shot in the face and then die. I think, that's, I think that's probably the play right there, is to just get shot in the face and die. Yeah, we got some great ideas. And then pass. Ah! But then pass. It's gonna be attack, sacrifice, experimental frenzy. And then shoot with wizard's lightning or something. Alright. <laughs> balls. <laughs> and we certainly were good at jarring land. Yeah, it was a pretty fun deck. If you want the deck list, it's right up here on the stream decker. Uh, I'm going to be back tomorrow. We're not playing Magic. We're playing Subnautica! Subnautica! Ah! And so that's going to be fun. I'm very excited because it's a game I've been looking forward to playing for a while. I just had to get a dual PC set up. I got my dual PC right down there to the left. It's going grandly. Uh, let's listen to some, some great music. I don't know what 
What even is good music anymore? What's some of my older music? 